Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Steve with LRM Leasing. Today we're in a uh, Freightliner Cascadia 2018 to 2020. And today I wanna to show you um, some issues with the truck, which I created, which are the most common things I always get phone calls about or I see on the dash. This Freightliner, what I did was I lit it up like a Christmas tree. You guys would say that there's a whole bunch of problems with the truck and you can see you have a check engine light on, you have you know stabilization, you have ABS, you have adaptive cruise, and the brake assist not available. And all I hear is, there's a big problem with my truck. So what we're gonna try to figure out together is how you guys can determine what to look at on the truck. One, to find out how to pull the codes. Two, it should give you a little bit better descriptions on these new trucks, which is awesome. And then three, you can tackle the proper ways of troubleshooting. There's three check engine lights on the truck. Everybody should know by now. If it has the word check, it's an amber color check engine light with the word check in it. Two things you need to check. You need to check oil level and coolant level. That's usually a good indication that would cause that problem. Now, if you have a solid amber light, um, that would indicate anything from the engine issue or transmission or even your after treatment. And everybody knows what the red check engine light. It's gonna come on, it's gonna blink, and it's gonna stop your engine. That means to stop. All right, so those are the three lights that you would see on here. So on this particular truck, we only have the word check in it and it's only lighted up in amber now the rest you'll have the normal stuff and then you'll see on the dash if we stroll through here there's four caution issues so the first one is brake assist not available the next one is adaptive cruise control unavailable and then the other one is abs not working service required so when you guys see all this the first thing i would uh, tackle would be would be the abs let's take a look at the abs and again we're going to use the steering wheel you're going to have arrows and the OK button, and then you're going to have an arrow that looks like a U-turn with an arrow pointing back to the left. So, and just follow the description on the screen. So right now I'm going to hit the arrow going back. And then what we're going to do where it says alerts, we're going to stroll down where it says diagnostics. Now, the best thing about this truck is you're going to, it says to select, press OK. You're going to hit the OK button. It's going to allow you to stroll down ABS, ACM, all the modules on your truck. So here's the good thing is where you'll see a little triangle next to the description of where you wanna go. So we wanna to go to ABS, that's where we need to go. Don't concentrate on anything else. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the okay button. So now the system's gonna collect the fault information. Now that it has, here's the code, ABS not working, service required. And what we're gonna do is it gives you a code right there. It gives you a, that'll be your SPN and your FMI. Now if you hit okay for more info, now, I gave you a letter. Now, the good thing about this, or it could give you a number. If you're from the driver's seat, always from the driver's seat, the tire on the steer to the left where you sit, A, B, C, D, E, F. Now, if you have all the wheels with ABS sensors, and you'll know, you'll see a wire going to each wheel. So majority of the trucks have two on the steer and only two on the back. Sometimes they'll have four. If I'm going by this where it says A, B, so A, B, passenger side is my problem. Now, when it says open circuit, there could be a few things. The wire's broken, could be unplugged, or usually, because that means it broke the circuit. It's open, all right? Sometimes it'll have short to high or anything like that, but it's pointing to the direction of the problem. And it tells you right here in your truck. So if you fix the ABS sensor, if we go over there and find out what the problem is and we replace the sensor and the light goes out, you'll know almost 60, 70% of the time, the other lights will go out. The, the one for adaptive cruise, the one for stabilization and everything will go out. And then the only thing that should be left is the check engine. So let's find out what that check engine light is well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the back button. That's that arrow, remember, goes back around and to the left and it's on the steering wheel. We're gonna press that we're gonna press it again. And now we're gonna stroll down to the next one. All right, this one says CPC. So CPC is receiving information. You know, the truck has multiple computers, so it's gonna receive all the information. And we can stroll down just to make sure if there's any other codes. So it's just in the CPC. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the CPC. And we're gonna do the same thing like we did with the ABS. We're gonna hit the OK button. It's gonna collect the fault information. All right, it came back. Electrical system problem detected. People freak out about that, like there's a big electrical problem. Take a breath. Sometimes it's the easiest thing. So we're gonna hit the OK button to get more information. All right, on this particular one, 
usually not all the time and this is probably a good example it'll still say electrical system problem detected and you're you are going to need another computer to hook up instead of you know if you don't have a computer which most people don't but you have the code so the code is one one three ones then four so just always know this the the numbers to the left is going to be your spn number then the other digit it could be one or two digits you know in this one here it's a four so it'll be fmi4 I'm telling you guys if you google it i'm going to tell you what it's going to say because a 111 code for me because i've been doing this for 20 some odd years this is going to be pointing towards our coolant level sensor so one or two things is happening there's a problem with the sensor something with the wire or the plug is broken um, but the most common problem are one or two things. It's the float or the sensor's bad. And the other thing is it could be because you're low on coolant. So sorry, three things. That's where I would go. But if anything, punch that code into Google and it'll give you a good description most of the time what the problem is. Or if anything, you can call your mechanic and give them that code so they can give you an idea what's going on. We pull the codes off the dash and i went to the first one the abs right the abs which was on b if you remember service b which was the passenger side steer tire so sure enough i found the problem it was a broken wire most likely what may have happened was the driver may have blown a steer tire and it took out the sensor which is very common when a tire explodes we replaced the wire we ran the truck over going uh, five ten miles per hour the abs light went out and guess what everything else went out. So that resolved that problem. Now, the check that I told you guys, the check engine with the check in it, what happened was the float inside the reservoir tank was on the bottom. And if you guys remember, I threw did a video of the most common problems with the, the new um, reservoir tanks in these Freightliner Cascadias. Remember I told you guys to check the fluid when you get this particular code or the float. If you see it on the bottom, you use a flashlight. And if it is, you're gonna have to replace the reservoir tank. So what we did was we replaced the reservoir tank and now the floats to the top like it's supposed to, check engine light went out and that light went out as well. So that's what we did by just doing it ourselves. I didn't take it to a shop to find out what the problem was getting the computer hooked up. Cause if you guys remember, they're gonna charge you whatever shop time it is. If it's an hour minimum or a diagnostic hookup, whatever the shop minimum is, which it could be like 150 to 230, or diagnostic for hooking the computer up like two to three hundred dollars. We only need five minutes. You play with your steering wheel, you pay attention to the dash, and you follow through and read the instruction. And the one code, electrical problem, right? Let's not freak out about it. So it didn't give us more description, but what I did was I took that code and I Googled it, or if I knew a mechanic that's my friend, which I have a lot of friends that are mechanics. But again, like I told you guys, I've been doing this for 20 plus years. I knew what a 111 code was, which was gonna point me to the coolant reservoir. It's gonna be low on coolant. There's a problem with the wire, which is usually sometimes the plug is broken or the float was down. But the most common issue with uh, the newer ones, I've seen so far is where the float sinks to the bottom. You just gotta replace the reservoir tank. Resolves that problem. All right, guys, so again, this was us pulling the codes off the dash on these newer trucks that which I have here, which is the 2018 to 2020. And it's very simple and it saves you guys hundreds of dollars just by doing it yourself. If you guys like what you saw today, don't forget to pound that like button. If you have any questions or concern of what you saw today, leave me a comment at the bottom. If you guys wanna save more money and get more content, you guys gotta subscribe. I'll see you guys at the next video.